back at the Freedom Factory doing spectator drags, and I got the Hellcat wrapped, all matte black. Got some uh, new powder coat on the wheels because each one of these wheels were absolutely curbed, all four of them. We still have some stripes to do down the side that are going to be a little red, white, and blue America theme. I think I showed you guys a little preview of it last time. All right, man. This is your official call out, first round. You got to show us, show the people the car. Uh, Tell us what we're working with here. Working with a 2012 Hellcat Swaps uh, yeah. police car. So this is a 2012 police car that he completely swapped over to the Hellcat. The interior, everything. How long did it take you? Three days. Look at that. That is definitely not a 2012 interior. And show him under the hood. That's a Hellcat motor if I've seen one. And it's uh, the eight speed, right? Yes, sir. Sweet. So what do you think? First round, you want to do it? All right, so since I called you out, do you want the inside lane or the outside lane? Inside lane. All right. Take the inside lane. I'll do outside. Yes, sir. <laughs> two matte black Hellcats facing off. This one's got four doors. That one's got two. This has got an eight speed. That's got a six speed. Should be a good one. Yes, sir. I think you've got better tires on the back, though. Uh, You've got some NT triple fives I saw, and I've got just like some cheap burners that I got for drifting, so. Big burnout guy, almost clipped him. All right, boys, hold on to your britches and tighten your overalls, because this is going to be a good race. second round i'm gonna shift into second on that back straight and we'll see how it does for this next round i'm either racing this uh was a pontiac trans am or firebird or i've got an audi s3 behind me i'd like to get paired up with this guy he said he sprayed the house down on wednesday popped a head gasket he's been up he they drove from like illinois or something to be here this weekend and he replaced his head gasket over last night and so he's spraying nitrous. We had talked a little strategy. Hopefully I'll end up with this guy. If not, I'll probably get smoked by this S3. So we'll see what happens. Looks like it's you and me, big dog. Let's go. Oh, Pure American muscle. Oh, yeah. I'm, way I'm so glad I'm racing you instead of some racer. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my Hellcat to the best. nitrous back there. I don't got that. <laughs> struggle with a little bit of wheel speed oh that car on the inside is getting very close a little squirrely looks like Parker is gonna be able to do okay if he just keeps it under control and Parker goes on to the next round give it up all right that's the second W all right I hope I'm not paired up with this test though we'll see what comes up behind me but all right, we're going on to the third round. If you remember last time I did spectator drives with the Fox body, I lost in the third round. Hopefully I can change it this time. I did my strategy a little bit different this time. I did shift into second and that gave me a lot more room to get on it and get it up to a lot of speed. So the car's cornering great and I'm able to get a lot of speed, which I'm happy with. We're holding in well and uh, let's do this. The first one was knocked out by Cletus. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
All right. Dr. Parker Mitchell starting off in style with a delicious burnout, warming up those tires, taking the inside line off the all-wheel drive Audi. This is going to be a hell of a race. Make some noise, folks, as we get underway here. Parker Mitchell trying to do his best to hold down the family name. He's going to have to win this on the back. That Audi. And it doesn't look like he's able to do it. The all-wheel drive Audi is just enough to take out Dr. Parker Mitchell from Teeth and Turbos. That challenger is just a heavy girl. It looks like the Audi's getting himself a cool down lap. Oh, wait a minute. I believe I'm being told that this is double eliminations for round two. Yes. So Parker really does have to win this in order to go on, but uh, the Audi, if he performs how he did last time, he's going to get him. Oh. Little squirrely. Dr. Mitchell did not have a, an outstanding start, unfortunately, giving the Audi the opportunity to really put a serious gap on, making it very difficult for Dr. Parker Mitchell. Bummer. All right, boys. Dude, you smoked me off the line, man. I was like keeping a distance with you, but you smoked me. That was good racing, man. Have, have fun out there. Well, just like last spectator drags, I lost the third round, but hey, it was against a quick car that launched off the line. I was able to stay with them once we were moving, but I can't beat a four-wheel drive like car like that. I mean, we all know those cars are quick, but hey, great racing out here tonight. Spectator drags are so much fun. Let's go! You and Alec, first round? Hey, let's hear the little ball, Valve. Two two races tonight, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Same with you? I know. We're ripping, dude. Hell yeah. Truck's looking good. Good job, bud. Is that Alec Carstens in his truck? Hey, back up there, bud. <laughs> Jeez. Easy on the boost pedal. All right, build and boost. Oh, tire speed. Yeah, that's Alec Carson's versus JH. <laughs> oh my God, these are both of their like regular daily driven trucks. Doing everything they can. Dude, JH is cooking. That is a lot of understeer in a big truck. Ooh. All right, front wheel drive compact car. What do you think? What is it, a Corolla? <laughs> it's a Honda. It's Wow, that is a serious oval track car. A lot more than the Fox body, wouldn't you say? Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. We got a bunch more tires here for it. And uh, just got to get the seat moved so that I fit a little better. Apparently, I think this guy was nice about going. six inches shorter than me. Or, but yeah, car set up for the, for the circle track. Pretty rigid, huh? Yeah. So I try and sit in it here. That's a tight fit, dude. The door doesn't open. The door does, there's no door handle. <laughs> Tell me this comes off. Oh uh, yeah, there's a pull on this side. Down. Down. Dude, there's really not any room to move that seat back. I know. I'm telling you, like literally the, the this seat. This is not, not looking healthy. Dude, it's all fabricated in there. Oh, careful, <laughs> careful that steering wheel. I, I can make this work for sure. I mean, if you think about it, I don't know how much shifting you'll be doing. No, not much. You really are just gonna kind of put it in second and send it. Yeah, I gotta figure out the gearing in this thing and see how it is. Yeah, definitely get it out there for a couple think laps. Start. There's only one way to find out. Oh, <laughs> sounding promising. Fuel bombs on. Battery on. Clutch in. Give it a cold wrap. 
give it a cold wrap. Dude, I think she would love to go on a date in that car. Right. Hey, when this happens, but the moment I put the new coil over, it's on. I was backing off the uh, lift and ripped my new. Bye. Bye, Spence. Bye, Kirsten. My new front bumper cover ripped off, and now I got to redo my heat. <laughs> my heat wrap on the exhaust because obviously that got screwed up as I was driving. All right, y'all, I'm back at the East County Hot Rod Shop and I am pulling apart the rear end. This is the last major piece of the puzzle. Got the motor, got the trans, got the gear vendor in, and I'm putting in that new drive shaft and there was way too much backlash. I'm talking maybe 30,000 inch. It should be between eight and 15, I think it is, a spec for a Ford 88. But mine was clunk, 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 like way too much. And I'm switching to a pinion yoke instead of the pinion flange on the drive shaft. And so I've always wanted to learn how to rebuild a rear diff and Sam has a lot of experience. So he said he'd be more than willing to show me how to do it. So I'm gonna get this thing apart, pull out the gear, pull the axles out, do all the stuff today so that we can start to rebuild this thing tomorrow. Hopefully have it up and running by for testing this weekend. All right, here's the first view inside of the rear end on Dr. Pepper. And looking like the ring and the pinion are in pretty decent shape, which this is a 355 gear and I'm choosing to stick with that. And the plan is to take out all of this and the pinion and put new bearings on everything. So I'm gonna have to pull the tires off, pull the axles out of here, and then get moving. Okay, got the driver's side axle out, and these are some beef doggers from Strange. I honestly had no idea what was in the back of this thing, and we've just been running with it, and I'm glad to see we have some really nice Strange axles with bearings that are still quite smooth, and all the splines look to be straight and intact. You can see a little bit of wear from where it's engaging. It looks like we have about an inch that's not engaging, but I'd rather see an inch that's not engaging than eight inches because anytime you see this, that's weakened shaft that's unbeing used because these splines were cut. And uh, I'm really happy to see how great shape this thing is in. Let's pull the passenger side. Oh, nice. This thing's in good shape. Well, there you have it, folks. Fully disassembled rear end and uh, waiting on the rebuild kit, which should be here tomorrow from Summit, which includes new bearings. And we're gonna get her freshened up and get the tolerance. And we're gonna get her freshened up and get that backlash set perfect. Hopefully the new dry shots will be here tomorrow too. Okay, Sam and I are getting ready to put the rear end back together. And this is the big difference in the upgrade going from the pinion flange to a pinion yoke. He said, what, this was rated for probably 500 horsepower and we're definitely pushing a lot more. So this is gonna end up sitting on top of here, yeah. on top of the pinion, connecting to the drive shaft, which I have a brand new drive shaft with a turbo 400 hookup or yoke on the front for going into the back of the gear venter because before it went into the back of the power glide. So we're just getting the whole rear end with some new shims and lubed up. Put back together make sure all the bearings and races are looking healthy before we put some miles in the car you ready yeah let's just look at this back like you can see let me get it down here where you can see it mm -hmm. 
looks like about just under five. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna need to get a little bit more backlash. Well, but, but see what we're gonna do is this. But the backlash is four, maybe three. We're looking at about five. Okay. Let me move his part out of the way here. See, there's five. Uh huh. Sounds like a ton, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like it's banging around the pinners. That's five thousandths right there. What do we want it at for what our purpose is? About little, seven. Little about, about seven. seven. Okay. About seven thousand. So does that mean we need to move the rear gear this way? Mm. Or we need to move it, it this way? Because you got, you got, uh, well, I, I apologize. No, it's mine. You, you got five, we want two thousand. So we're going to add two here to push it over that way here. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So let's take the, so whatever we've got, we'll just take two in here, two out there. Uh-huh. Now then, what we're going to do, we're going to check on the loaded side. So we're going to come to here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, see? Mm-hmm. See there? Yep. Where we are? Yeah. Now then, let's check the unload. sweep underneath it there yeah so what do we do is this too far towards the toe mm -hmm. no because see you're going when you see this tooth right here yeah see where it load all the way out to right there yeah see the same one here you don't want to go no i would not go any more shit anymore and run in than this because this is on your strong side right here you want mm -hmm. it you want as far in as you can go but not overlap on the thing I so see. right there, you're right at the edge of it. You don't want to start in the middle and work your way out. No, no, no. Because when you get out here, you're gonna you're on the on the weak side here and here. When you get out too far out of here, I see. So you want to be toe right side. You want to be toe your, side. Your toe. You want it within probably say a hundred, maybe a hundred and twenty five thousandths from here. Yeah. To your first mark right there. Mm hmm So which, we're looking. Which that's about where we are. It's about one hundred twenty five thousand from where my fingernail is down the edge of the gear where it starts to first load right there. So we're looking pretty healthy. That's good, right there. It's, it's just broken in, we'll put it that way, it's just broken in. Yep. You can go anywhere from eight to 11. I like to set them just a little bit toward the tighter side, about eight. Especially since and we're racing with Especially that. this one here, you're gonna do two things. You're gonna be racing it and you're gonna be street running a lot. So yep. um, if it's strictly street, we could open it up to say 10 or 11, but means you're gonna race it, we want it as tight as we can without causing okay. damage, so. Good. And after our first race, we'll check it again. Okay. Okay. What are you doing there? Make sure you got a flat face to work off of. Yeah. The See bear, that? if you notice, the bearing's not in here, right? I understand. But it's on the... Uh, you need, on any of your flattened surfaces, no matter where they are or what they are, on the thing, like, like here, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the file, even though you've already addressed what the seal was, I'm going to take the file and just run around so you don't have any pull through, like, say, here when you run a bolt up. Any thread pull through any burrs along here or here. I'm just gonna run the file around there a little bit just to make sure we're getting a good okay. white seal on it. That's all. Well folks, Sam and I have the car back together. Suspension upgrades, coilovers, lower control arm brackets, and we went through the rear end, put some, uh, what do we do? We reshinned it and should we, we respaced the pinion. Check the backlash on the thing for one. We looked at all of the bearings just to check, make sure they're okay. Yep. And check the gear for the uh, heel and toe pattern on that to make sure it's okay. Yep. And up on the, uh, change that to flange up here on the front where it had that breakable flange. Yep, on the we front. had the, yoke we had there. the uh, pinion flange. Now we have a pinion yoke. Mm -hmm. With the new four inch aluminum drive shaft from yes. Precision Shaft Technologies, we moved our drive shaft hoop yep. and we put a gear vendor in. I think we are ready to start testing this thing. I do have some wiring to button up for the gear vendor and for the bump. 
on the trans brake. Other than that, we're looking healthy. Let's get this car on the on the drag strip. Oh, also coming up this week, new wheels and tires, which I'm really excited about. Yes. And I need to get an alignment before we start racing this thing in a straight line. We gotta make sure it goes straight. Yes, 100%. All right, let's clean up our mess. Who would have thought growing up watching all those many, many hours of Top Gear that I would be racing the BBC Top Gear guys at my brother's racetrack. What? This is crazy. We're doing the Dirty 30. We got 11 cars. We're doing 30 laps. They have nitrous. They're all Crown Vicks. They're all in the same playing field. And this is going to be epic. Now, the 2.4 hours of Lamolis and the Freedom 500 are usually about 100 plus laps. So this is going to be a lot shorter, a lot faster, a lot more action. We're going to have some fun. Okay, y'all, so BBC Top Gear owns the rights to the footage of the race until they, until they post the video, so uh, you will be able to get a scene of the action of it, but it was epic, it was so much fun, the guys put on a great race, everyone had a good time, and I'm excited for y'all to see it. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track, we're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only $39. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush out every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.